Now in recent weeks we've seen a number of new releases, namely irons, that have, uh, well, begged a few questions. One, in terms of price, namely the i59s, and then you've got things like the P790s which have come along with a new version, that's the third iteration of the P790 since 2017. The questions are, is why are the i59s so expensive and how much better are P790s from their initial model? And they got me asking the question, well, right now, what is the most underrated set of irons that are out there on the marketplace? And I reckon it sticks out quite a way, to be honest with you. But it's not just a case of being underrated in terms of performance, but the price thing is significant too, and it's a big, big deal. So let's just take the price thing first of all as being the first potential issue. Now, last week I did a review of the... Uh, we're down on the par three course, by the way, here at um, Four Golf. That's why we're on the mats. I, I did a review of the i59s, and the massive feedback in terms of the comments from you was about the price. Major issue: 239 list price, probably going to sell at 199 per club. The most expensive iron, as far as I'm concerned, that Ping have produced. It's a massive amount of money for a set of irons. Then you go to the likes of the P790. They're coming in at 160, so that makes them kind of like what's that? 1100 pound for a set, a set of seven irons. And again, that's probably the norm. To be fair to TaylorMade now, whether it's good or bad, if you look at Mizuno's and you look at the TaylorMade's and you look at Callaway irons, that type of iron is gonna be pitched in around 1100 pound for seven irons. It's a huge amount of money. These things I've got in my hand right now, which I'm saying are massively underrated in terms of performance, well, they come in at literally half that price. I wanna know what the difference is in terms of performance. Sit. Now the clubs I'm referring to would clearly fall into the, let's say the game improvement category, even though I hate those kind of labels. But to me, they probably appeal to the mass market and certainly to the majority of average golfers out there. They look good, they play really well. As far as I'm concerned, the performance is really good and the price difference is massive. So what are they? But before I get to what they are, what would you consider to be the most underrated irons that are out there right now? And I'm only talking about what's been released in this last 12 months. Now, one thing that has always surprised me about these irons since I first tried them was how good they feel. Because again, this is a cast club, by the way. So that's the first thing to mention. And I'm always surprised, like I said, when a cast club sort of my big deal in terms of golf irons that is is all about feel and when i get a cast club do they really match up to forge no they don't and these don't either but they do an incredibly good job of sounding really good and in therefore feeling good as well hit the flag <laughs> and he did so enough of the guessing games, let's reveal what these clubs are. But the way I'll do that is going back inside. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pitch my most underrated iron up against the P790 current model. We'll check some dry ball data and we'll see how they compare, first of all, in terms of their performance difference. And maybe this is the, maybe this is where we'll find why there is such a difference in the price of these two clubs to start with. Right, seven irons up for collecting some data. Um, I've got these two clubs, like I said, our most underrated and our P790. Just that address, just to compare these two. From the top line, not a lot to split them. If anything, the most underrated looks that little bit narrower, if you like. It's chamfered off a bit better. It's been a bit of a surprise on the P790s this year that they've got that top line, I think, looking a bit chunkier than they did in the previous models. But from heel to toe, there is a difference but not a lot to split them at address. But overall, this is definitely a chunkier profile and would, like I said, and I'll continue to say, probably fit into more of that game improvement category. But let's collect data and see if we can find out what the difference is between a premium club and what is my most underrated. We'll switch over just while you're still got this camera rolling. And after a decent ball with my most underrated, what happens in terms of the feel difference when I move over to this, well, debatable forged head on the P790? Well, you can probably hear the difference. This P790 is got such a clicky sound to it that it's the one thing in the previous review that in terms of everything about the P790 I love, the one thing I've still got an objection to is the way they sound. And if anything, my most underrated 
It's got a little bit of a softer feel to it and it's a cast club. The suspense is probably killing you or if not it'll certainly be boredom but either way I'll reveal what the uh, club is. My most underrated iron is the PXG 0211. Why is it the most underrated? Well because first of all it's a decent looking club. Not the best looking club, decent looking club. It's well put together. It feels really good, surprisingly good considering it's a cast club. That bit has always baffled me as to how good this feel is. It performs really, really well. That dry ball data we just collected, I'll put up in front of you now. These are two seven irons. The difference between them is very much about loft. The seven iron and the 0211 is 28 degrees. The tailor made is 30.5. So what you see there really is a drop off in spin number and that little bit of added distance comes from the, P, uh, the 0211 launch angle being identical. But in all honesty, from a performance perspective, they did little front to back, left to right dispersion was all about how good I hit the ball or not. So they tick every single box in terms of when you're doing a comparison video. But then you get to that vital point that I make about price. And that's what everybody's been talking about in recent videos and why I chose to do this video today. Never did I think I'd do a video where I suggested PXG was the most underrated, but a lot of it down to the price point that it's at. These are £80 per iron. And if you compare that to that of the i59s at being £239, the P790s at £160, and a P790 being probably about where it's at right now. If you looked at Mizuno, Callaway, um, TaylorMade's premium irons, then they're going to be in and around that sort of 160 number per club. So these are half the price. And people talk about how expensive golf is to play. And yes, it's a very expensive sport, but if you want to get some real value for money right now, then I cannot see past these 0211s. Like I've just said, so far, every box has been ticked. I'm not too sure what more we can do to suggest these are the clubs to go for if you want to save a bit of money, but not make massive compromises in terms of quality. There's only one thing that split those strikes between the 7 iron of the P790 and the 7 iron of the 0211s and that was my strike but if it was arguably very little difference whatsoever to split them. As you've already seen there from dry ball data, the only thing that really splits them in terms of performance there is the strength of loft. So I'm now kind of getting to the point where the purpose of this video back at the beginning was how underrated are these irons and what is the difference that we're having to pay that huge sum that huge difference in terms of the price of the irons what are we exactly getting different for the money that we're shelling out and now all of a sudden that gap is becoming very very small and minute and the bits that are the reasons you're choosing to play the likes of the p790 let's say because that's just using them as an example of very much personal preferences personal nuances and things you like from an iron but are you really going to be a better golfer by choosing club a over club b well, that's getting really debatable. Now, one reason you might decide that you want to pay a bit more money for your irons is the way they look. From a shelf appeal point of view, do I think the 0211s are the best looking irons out there right now? Well, no, possibly not. I would definitely pick other irons that are better looking. I think the P790s, for example, do look better on the eye. And again, from a profile perspective, these are definitely a game improvement iron. But do I think the 0211 is a good looking iron? Yes, I do. It's Good finish, but what I don't like is the plastic insert at the back. It's not what you'd call premium. And that's where I think it lets it down in terms of that shelf appeal element. But that again is very much a personal thing. But that might be a reason why you decide to shell out some more money. Then the other thing I don't forget is the likes of the P790s, the I-59s, they're supposed forged irons. And I say that because supposed, are they really forged irons? I'm not so sure. But that again might be a reason why you're paying a premium price for those and not shelling out that, or saving yourself a whole lot of money in these cast irons, these 0211s. Now, many of you are still gonna want a verdict from me in terms of this head-to-head -head battle, and uh, I'll give you one. It's uh, 
On a lux perspective, I would choose the P790s. On a sound perspective and feel, I'd choose the O211s. On a profile perspective, I prefer the uh, P790s. So this as a head-to-head -head would be a very close call. There's not a lot to spit, split them and their personal nuances or preferences, whatever you want to call them, is to which I would personally go for. But then it comes back to that final bottom line. And uh, would I pay twice the amount of money for a set of P790s against 211s? Well, then that one. I'll leave up to you.